Hello students and a very warm welcome to Notebook. Today, we are going to start a really interesting chapter which will be used in almost all the upcoming chapters. Can you guess the name of the chapter? Let me give you a hint through the following illustration. A teacher divides the students in four groups and asks each group to buy pen and pencil of their choice. The teacher put no restriction on number of pen and pencils to be bought by each group. But she fixed the amount to be spent by each group to rupees 50. Also, each group is not supposed to tell anyone about the number of pens and pencils they bought, as we are to perform an interesting task tomorrow in class. All the students excited to buy pen and pencil went home. Next day, all the students excited about the task come to the class and take their seats. Students, have you all bought the pens and pencils worth rupees 50? Now each group, one by one, tell me the relationship between number of pens and pencils bought by you without actually telling me the numbers. So group 1 says the number of pencils are 4 more than the number of pen. Group 2 says the number of pencils they bought is 3 more than twice the number of pen. Then group 3 says number of pencils we bought is 2 more than square of number of pencils Group 4 says, the number of pencils we bought are equal to cube of number of pen. Teacher impressed by the answers applauds them. So students, this was interesting, wasn't it? But what we are about to do is even more interesting. So let's start. If the number of pen bought by each group is X, then what is the total number of pen and pencil bought by them according to the information given by them? Let's see. Group 1 said that number of pencil are 4 more than number of pen. So if number of pen is x, then number of pencil is x plus 4. So their sum becomes x plus x plus 4, which is 2x plus 4. Similarly, according to information given by group 2, we get the total number of pen and pencil bought by them is x plus 2x plus 3, which is 3x plus 3. And the total number of pen and pencil bought by group 3 are x plus x square plus 2, that is x square plus x plus 2, and by group 4 are x plus x cube. So students, what are these expressions that represent total number of pen and pencil? These are nothing but polynomials. Yes, polynomials is the chapter that is used in almost all the upcoming chapters. So let's see the formal definition of polynomials. Students, a polynomial is an algebraic expression which contains one or more than one term. For example, x, x squared plus x plus 2, x cubed plus 5 are all polynomials. The general form of polynomial is represented by px is equal to a0 plus a1x plus a2x square plus all the way to an to x to the power n, where a0, a1, a2 till an are constants and x is a variable. So we get different values of polynomial px by substituting various values of x. For example, if we are given a polynomial px is equal to 4x plus 5, then substituting x equals 0, we get p0 is equal to 4 into 0 plus 5, which is equal to 5. That is the value of polynomial px is equal to 4x plus 5 at x equal to 0. Similarly, we can put x is equal to minus 1, 1, 500, and get values of px. Let us look at one more example, px equal to x minus 4. When we put x is equal to 4 and we get the value of px is equal to 0. So in this case, we can say x is equal to 4 is the 0 of the given polynomial. So all those values of x for which the value of px comes out to be 0 are called zeros of the polynomial px. So students, now that we have understood what polynomials are, let us understand what degree of polynomial is and how are polynomials classified based on their degree. So students, if px is a polynomial in variable x, then the highest power of x in px is called the degree of the polynomial. For example, if px is equal to x cubed plus 2x squared minus x plus 4, then the power of x in the first term is 3, in the second term is 2, in the third term is 1. So the highest power of x in the given polynomial is 3. Therefore, given polynomial px is polynomial of degree 3. Now students, we can classify polynomials 
on the basis of their degrees. Polynomial of degree 0 is called constant polynomial as it doesn't contain any variable. General form of a constant polynomial is px is equal to a, where a is some real number. For example, px is equal to 12 or px equal to minus 27 are all constant polynomials. Now, the next polynomial is a polynomial of degree 1, which is called linear polynomial. General form of linear polynomial is px equal to ax plus b, where a and b are some real numbers and a is not equal to 0. px is equal to 2x plus 3, px equal to 7x are examples of linear polynomial. Friends, the polynomial of degree 2 is called quadratic polynomial. General form of a quadratic polynomial is px is equal to ax square plus bx plus c when a is not equal to 0. Polynomials like px equal to 3x square plus 4x plus 2 or px equal to 5x square plus 3 are all examples of quadratic polynomials. The next polynomials are polynomials of degree 3, which are called cubic polynomials, and are written generally as px equal to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d when a is not equal to 0. Some of the examples of cubic polynomials are px equal to 9x cubed plus 5x squared plus 3x plus 1. px is equal to 23x cubed plus 3. So students, we can summarize the classification of polynomials on the basis of their degree as shown in the table. Polynomial of degree 0 is called constant polynomial. Polynomial of degree 1 is called linear polynomial. That of degree 2 is called quadratic polynomial. And of degree 3 is called cubic polynomial. Students, I hope today's session was interesting for you. If you have any doubts, please go through the session again. We will meet soon in our next session. Till then, stay healthy and keep practicing. Goodbye.